Hey everybody, it's David from Projector People here. We have James Shu, the Director of Global Product Marketing for Vivitech. He's come in with his entire team and to show off a brand new 4K unit from Vivitech. This is a home theater unit. Actually, it'd probably be better if you just tell us a little bit about Vivitech and where you guys have come from and what it is you guys do. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk about Vivitech and our new HK2288 uh, 4K projector. So we've been uh, since 2008-2009 on the market. Um, we have projectors going from small uh, 500 lumen LED projector up to large projectors, more than 10,000 lumen using laser phosphor technology. In, in, um, in between we have the mainstream corporate projectors around three to 4,000 lumen, then we have high performance mainstream projectors up to about five, 6,000 lumen. And of course you were talking about education projectors, we do have short throw and uh, ultra short throw projectors with lamp based or uh, laser phosphor projectors. And then we have of course um, the home cinema projector range as uh, you see here we have our newest uh, addition to the family, it's a 4K uh, projector and we're very proud to show it to you today here. Fantastic, and we're very excited to see it. So we're gonna talk about this thing right now. The first thing I wanna talk about is, this is the smallest 4K projector we've seen mm -hmm. <laughs> to date. Uh, pretty much all the other 4K projectors, I know you guys aren't here with us, but they're, they're beasts, they're BMOS. Um, this is a, a very compact unit, but the image that comes out of this thing is just jaw, I mean, literally jaw dropping. Everyone in here was just shocked at how amazing it was. And we compared this side by side against a native 4K projector. And you'll see, Daniel will put a link here in the video. Uh, you can see a direct comparison to that. Uh, and I think that you'll be very shocked and amazed at what you can get from this unit uh, compared to 4K, uh, native 4K. Now, talking about native 4K, we get so many questions all the time. Consumers are confused. There's UHD, there's 4K, there's 4K eShift, there's 4K enhancement. Where does this projector fall in that mix? Um, I, I think uh, the, the reason why we have a lot of confusion is because um, some are, they call 4K enhancement or we call about e-shift. At the end, uh, what is uh, very important for, for, the, for the consumers is that really they see 4K image. And 4K image is basically, um, normally it's called ultra high definition, UHD, sure. and it's uh, 3840 times 2160. So at the, at the end, if you can see, if you count the, the number of pixels on the screen, 8.3 million pixels, that's actually a real 4K. And we are talking about the DLP 0.66 inch uh, DMD that gives you uh, a, a 8.3 million pixels. So that is actually true 4K. Right, that's the new Textures Instruments Micro Mirror chip that that's correct. everybody's super excited about. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that you should be super excited about it because it is, it is miraculous. Yeah, so you bring up a very good point. 8.3 million pixels, mm -hmm. that's what this thing is doing. Some of the other units out there, while they may look amazing, they're not getting close to that number of pixels, no mm -hmm. matter how they're doing it. Um, so the detail, side by side, you literally cannot tell the difference at all between this and a native 4K projector. The only difference you'll feel is in your pocketbook because it's, it's a lot less inexpensive. Um, so the other thing that is super popular right now and a lot of people are talking about is HDR. Does this 4K projector support HDR, mm -hmm. and what color modes does it support, I guess? Is... Okay, so uh, we have uh, HDR10 that is uh, implemented in our HK2288, and HDR10 is basically high dynamic range over 10 bits. Uh, that means you have a, a greater range of luminance level up to uh, 10 bit, meaning it's 2 exponent 10, which is 1024, and mm -hmm. these are basically the, the grayscale level, if you are talking about white, between the black and the white, so you create a bigger uh, luminance uh, range, and then you can do that as well with uh, the primary colors R, G, and B. So this is basically increasing the, the contrast, the perceived contrast ratio. Gotcha. It's a, it's a wider color space exactly. and brightness. Yes. Space, right? so yes. Very good. Um, let's talk about this unit as far as placement in a house where this kind of fits. This is a 2000 lumen unit, correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, what kind of image can you get from this unit? How far back can you place it? Where does it belong? Does it belong in a basement? Can you use it in a living room? Just okay. tell us a little bit. So um, it has a relatively wide zoom range. So it's a 1.5 times uh, zoom. So that's uh, flexible enough to, to, to put it either at the back or, or more in the middle. 
Um, the throw ratio is between 1.39 to 2.09, so it's uh, relatively good. So 1.39, it means that you have about 1.39 meters. I don't know in conversions to imperial uh, uh, units, but basically it's 1.4 meters to get one meter wide, up to about 2.1 meter for one meter wide. So a project like this, I would recommend it to uh, any um, converted living room or a dedicated home cinema room. We actually have two different units. Um, they will be uh, black and white. So basically this one is a black unit, 2000 lumen. We'll also have a brighter version of this model. We'll call it the HK2488. Uh, so the HK2488 will be uh, white and will have also higher brightness level at uh, about 4000 lumen. So basically you don't really need to have a pitch black room and uh, the brightness will be strong enough uh, for you to, to counter all the uh, environment lighting. Um, so uh, 120 inch should not be an issue if you were talking about uh, image, uh, image size. And um, this unit is, you were talking about BT2020. Uh, BT2020 is basically, as you know, a very big uh, white color space. Right. Um, we are not matching BT2020, especially on projector that's very difficult to reach. The reason is because uh, if you compare to Rec709 color space, um, in order to reach BT2020, you would probably need to divide the brightness by 4. So if you were talking about 8,000 lumen, you will get only a 2,000 lumen. So that was not really the, the goal for us. I think what is very important is that we get a color accuracy and white, of course, white gamut color. You could also see the HDR is helping a lot on the color saturation. Yeah, so for us, it was not uh, a goal to reach BT2020. Maybe in the future, whenever we have laser phosphor uh, illumination source and we have a much higher brightness, and we can afford to go, go down by, by 4 or divide by 4 the brightness, then possibly we can reach a BD2020. Right, and honestly, when you see this thing in action and the HDR is on, it, it is, uh, it's the best HDR we've seen in a projector so far. It was mind-blowing, mind-blowing. So, um, upsampling. Mm -hmm. So, 4K content is still relatively sparse. Mm -hmm. It's getting bigger, mm -hmm. but a lot of people still have you know, Blu-rays, mm -hmm. 1080p content. How does this handle that content? Mm -hmm. Does it upscale? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so um, if you have a, a normal Blu-ray player, uh, which is 1920 by 1080, so 1080p, uh, you just still plug in with the HDMI, whether it's uh, 1.4 or 2.0, uh, it will actually upscale the content from 1080p to UHD, so 3840 times 2160, so that's not an issue. Um, you will basically, if you have, for instance, one line, uh, basically uh, 1080p times 4 is UHD. If you have one line in, in uh, basically in width, you will basically have two lines. And basically, if you have one line in, in, in height, you will have actually two lines. So basically, it's doing automatically via the MSTAR video processor to do the upscaling. From 1080p to Good, and that's all built in. Yes, absolutely. No need to put any converters. Okay, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you bring up a really good point, mm -hmm. right? That's built in. Mm -hmm. We were talking about, before we got this started, about gamers, right? We mm -hmm. have a ton of gamers out mm -hmm. there. They're always asking questions. Once you get used to gaming on a big screen, you can't go back to a little screen. One of the questions they always ask us, and uh, it's really hard for us to figure out, is input lag, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gaming, I don't want to lose, you know, things are, are cheeky or jaggy. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of input lag does this have? What kind of tests have you guys done on it? Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Okay. So um, we have not yet done the testing. However, okay. based on some um, information from engineering and some calculation, we should be around 50 milliseconds, which should be oh, good a enough sweet spot. For, uh, for gaming. And we've done some testing against competition, uh, side by side, and we could not see any uh, input lag compared to references on the market. So I think it's uh, uh, very suitable for gamers, and I think it's uh, a great machine for, for them. Yeah, that's fantastic. Same thing as far as input sources. We did another video where we were talking about mm -hmm. there's some issues with video sources, direct input. We had this hooked up to a switcher. Yes. So we're getting two sources of an intermediary connection. Yes. No lag between no. either one of them. So, and that was a native projector that was showing 4K natively with no processing, and your projector that was doing some processing for the 4K. No lag, no difference at all. So that's 
really important to a mm -hmm. lot of people out there. So um, obviously you guys are going to continue to test that throughout the, the next few months before you release. When is this coming to market? What kind of price can we expect to see mm -hmm. uh, when it comes here? Tell us about that. So um, the expected uh, mass production and availability uh, date is end of June. So okay. end of this uh, second quarter 2017. Uh, the market pricing, we're not 100% sure, but we should be just below $4,000 in the U.S. So it's going to be very competitive and we hope to be very successful uh, with our partners uh, to, to distribute and sell this uh, VivitaC projector. Yeah. Yes, we're very excited to see the unit as well. We cannot wait to get our hands on it and start selling it as well. Uh, James, thank you so much for your time today you, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.